Well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for today's show. I'm really excited to have with me um, Aaron Gallagher uh, because Aaron is somebody who has spent a career doing um, communications. She was a powerhouse in the communications field and then decided to take a leap of faith and start her own business, one that has a very strong stated uh, goal of helping to create equality for women, for women of color, um, but really trying to support women and make sure that the workplace is one that is equitable for women. As we have talked about previously with uh, She Speaks Community, we know that over 85% of purchase decisions in the U.S. are made by women. Um, we make up, of course, over 51% of the population. So I, I'm really excited for Erin to talk to us today about her new company called Have Her Back Consulting, which she started in 2000. 2019. She left a very uh, comfortable corporate job at that point to start um, the Have Her Back Consulting with two other women. Um, and really, it's been her life's mission um, as, you know, in terms of creating this company to make sure that there is that companies and some of the biggest companies and the and brands in the world are really um hel they're helping them tackle the equality issue and really doing it differently and authentically so erin welcome to the show and thank you for being here today thank you eliza i'm so glad to be here um and i, I really can't wait to talk about all this yeah um well me too let's start with um let's kind of start with why don't you describe what have her back consulting is and what you guys do today yeah so carolyn detman pamela culpepper and i started this company we launched it last year um, in september in 2019 so we just hit our year milestone a few months ago Congratulations. and thank you i mean you know a lot of i'm sure a lot of women listening to this and and you know what it's like to start your own company and to be an entrepreneur there are so many unknowns, but um, I'm lucky enough to be doing this with two women who I trust implicitly and who really bring something very different than what I do to this work. And so, you know, what we are doing is we are working, as you just said, kind of with some of the world's biggest brands and companies to, to address um, equity for all. And I think that, you know, a lot of a lot of companies for decades have been working on this and trying to do a better job of diversity and inclusion and belonging and and creating programs that support it and, uh, you know, attempting to look at their policies and practices and and make sure that they really are having and creating an environment that allows women and people of color to thrive and to be successful when we know that there are systemic barriers in place that make that more challenging. Mm -hmm. So so we what we did was and you know I kind of laugh and it's hard when you're on a podcast you can't see air quotes when we say comfortable corporate jobs, right? No job is you know is a, a given and it's not that mm -hmm. we were having an easy time either. It's just that we were a part of an established organization and part of a, a global holding company. Mm -hmm. And we decided to take the risk and, and start our own business because we, we wanted to focus on this full time and bring some creative ideas to this problem so that we can actually address it differently. Are the are the majority of your projects um, internal within organizations um, in terms of helping them do things for their team members, large corporations with for internally for their team members, or is it also forward facing communications to to women um, to women that might be customers? Yes. <laughs> That's the yes, short answer. It's it's the whole thing, right? It's 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 honestly what we call sort of like the the inside out approach. It's the whole the whole spectrum of authenticity. So mm -hmm. everything you just said, that is what we have to do differently now. You mm -hmm. cannot say you are one thing on the outside in your marketing, in your communications to your consumers, mm -hmm. in your beautiful advertising and your messaging, and not back that up with how you are treating your people and what you are doing for things like the environment and social impact and all of those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So you do, you have to be addressing both at the same time. And so what, what else is interesting is when we come into an organization, we are often working with a connection of the HR or DNI 
leaders, the marketing leaders, the communications leaders, and then obviously the CEO has to be on board with this because mm -hmm. this requires the whole organization to sort of move together. So it is those things. It's helping them look at their policies and practices and see, again, where are they potentially, where do they have blind spots mm -hmm. um, that they're missing something? They're not, that it's not the intention to, to have an impact in a negative way, but it might be having that impact because they aren't mm -hmm. thinking about it from an outside in perspective. Mm -hmm. What are the, how are they marketing themselves? How are they marketing to, mm -hmm. to their consumer who you just rightly noted are, you know, 85% of consumer buying power is held by women. And mm -hmm. that's $20 trillion in the U S alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, this notion that women are a niche market is, is laughable, right? Because we are the market. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you are not thinking about us and thinking about how we perceive messages, how we use products, right? It's also about product development. That's another thing that we are doing with companies. We are helping them with physical products they're creating, technology, how do women utilize technology? How is their experience different? Yeah. And then all the way through to how then are you talking about your efforts and, and where you stand on something. So it's really that whole spectrum. Yeah. So in terms of what inspired you, the three of you, as you said, you had these comfortable um, corporate jobs. What, what, was, what was going on? Did you guys look around and say, we're in this, we're in these worlds and we still think the companies are getting it wrong with women. So we need to do something to help. Like, what was it or, yeah. or, you know, was there something that happened that kind of inspired you guys to take this leap of faith, right, to, mm -hmm. to start this, to start this uh, new company? Yeah, no, there, I mean, there was, there was a moment, I think there was a moment that a lot of women were having, and it was really at the height of Me Too and Time's Up. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking around and a lot of us were sort of in solidarity with one another saying, I've been through this, I've experienced this mm -hmm. and, and companies were starting to hold people accountable in a way that mm -hmm. they hadn't before. Right. This was, this took precedent in the, in, in media, in conversations, in culture, the demands for better. And so with me too, specifically, you had all of these monsters that were being walked out the door mm -hmm. more often than not, they were men. And, and in many cases they were, they were straight white men um, mm -hmm. because they had been leaders in their organizations and their behavior had been um, allowed for her decades in some cases. Mm -hmm. And so what you had was you had a, a reckoning um, with this and you had all of these uh, leaders being walked out. And we said, that's great. But what about the women whose careers they that, like they left in their wake, right? What about the women who either stayed in that organization and soldiered on with little mm -hmm. to show for it? Mm -hmm. What about the women who spoke up and were either blacklisted or pushed out of their organization? What about those that that left altogether because they were not interested in fighting that fight anymore? Mm -hmm. um, and they either, went out on their own or they changed industries altogether. So, mm -hmm. so really we were sort of focused on that because this other piece was happening, but we were really concerned about the cultures that allowed that behavior to thrive and the fact that no one was addressing it, right? Mm -hmm. Because in our minds, this is going to keep happening, right? You can't yeah. just take them out if the culture allowed it in the first place. So, mm -hmm. so we started, Carolyn and I have her back as a mission um, at our agency to challenge the marketing and the PR and the advertising industry to do better for women, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. really look at themselves and create environments. I mean, the name was twofold. It was environments that they would want to come back to. How are you going to have her back? How are you going to get her to come back and trust that this is a place that she should invest in again? And then once she's there, how are you going to have her back? How are you going to support her in her career and all of the life challenges that that will come with it and again the systemic barriers that are in place that we're going to have to overcome and so when we did that you know we we got a lot of great support in our public group is the holding company we worked for we had leaders from all over in our public group that were stepping up and and talking about the actions they were taking and over the next year we went around the country and had these really intense and important meetings with women in the communities Mm -hmm. that had experienced this and with leaders and mm -hmm. were trying to connect the dots. 
And then Silicon Valley happened, Mm -hmm. which was an event that we did there with, again, some of the biggest um, brands and companies. We had um, HP, we had Karen Khan, Chief Communications Mm -hmm. Officer. We had the VP of User Experience, Sarah Alpern from LinkedIn. We had the global head of DNI at um, Adobe. Katie Duran, and these women were all talking about what they were doing at their companies. And so when you think about the HPs and the LinkedIn's and the Adobe's of the world, if you had that kind of change Mm -hmm. taking place, Mm -hmm. now we're going to see a ripple effect. So that sparked something in us. And we said, is this a business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that that was really the, the inflection point for us. So this started as a passion project for you and for your co-founders. And then you realized that you had, a obviously there was the passion for it, but also was sort of when the passion meets the opportunity where you could actually have a business, that's when magic happens. So it sounds like for you, that it was not something you necessarily went into thinking, oh, we're going to start this business, but it was one that you were passionate about and you saw this market opportunity. What's been, what has been the biggest hurdle in terms of convincing companies that, you know, that they, and maybe it's, it's like, maybe you convince somebody at the company to be the sponsor, but within the companies, are you guys getting resistance? Are you finding that there's resistance to, to the idea of, of change or are, are people, do you think people are ready for change? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's something that I think we wrestle with every day. And when we started our the company and you know we launched in September of 2019, we had great support and, and outpouring and interest from people. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, I think that there is something that has been happening in culture in the past few years that has made this a priority in a way that it wasn't before. It's not that people weren't working towards it. People have been working towards this for for hundreds of years, right? But there was something about the the expectation of culture and the demands and the power that consumers have that was starting to pressure leaders Mm -hmm. at these biggest brands and companies to start to actually take action. Mm -hmm. This like notion of saying something, right? The good intentions without needing that with intentional action was starting to really... Um, work against people. So I think that we saw that. And then, you know, this summer with the murder of George Floyd and the uprising and the, you know, social justice movement that followed, Mm -hmm. again, you saw that pressure elevated. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we saw every member of the Fortune 500 say that Black Lives Matter and put a Mm -hmm. statement out and talk about what they're going to do. And so we are now almost six months past that. And we are we are all going to have to go back and look and and ask questions of those in leadership positions at these organizations about how they're tracking mm-hmm. and and those commitments that they made whether it was to increase the number of people of color in leadership mm-hmm. um, whether it was to increase the number of women in their organization to um, address the hiring challenges that were limiting the number of people that they were bringing into their organization, look at, look at their employee process and, and why are they losing so many people of color two and three years in? So really there was, there's a lot of introspection that, that -hmm. consumers are, and employees are expecting of these brands to Mm -hmm. say, there is a systemic issue here, right? There's systemic Mm -hmm. racism, there's systemic gender discrimination. And if we are built on that and the systems have supported that, we are Mm -hmm. going to have to break these systems down. And we are going to have to ask questions about the way that we've always done things and really uncover if they are the best way going Mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the change is going to be long lasting. Do you feel like, because I, I, you know, we obviously saw some of the same 
things, um, you know, over the summer um, with the um, the rise in the social justice um, uh, and and people having a voice in that, right? Everyday people having a voice in that, and I think that's where you saw the pressure on the companies, right? Because mm -hmm. we were all, you know, as consumers, as people, in the, you know, people who live in this country, we were really mobilized. That's right. Do you think, based on your experience, because I know you have a marketing background, a communications mm -hmm. background, as part of that, you understand um, a bit the psychology of what happens with human beings. Do you believe that this is something that is going to have a long lasting um, impact um, or is it still TBD? I have to believe <laughs> that it's gonna have long lasting impact. Honestly, mm -hmm. to get up in the morning, I have to believe it. I have mm -hmm. two little kids. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old son. Um, and so, and Carolyn and Pamela also have sons. There are six boys between the three of us, among the three of us. Mm -hmm. So so we have to believe that it is going to change. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the other thing I think about when we started this business and even some of the questions that we received from people or the pushback or the, you know, the clarif clarification that came along with it. Mm -hmm. Really, do you think this is, do you think this is something that's going to last? Do you think that this is a business? Do you think people are going to prioritize this? And we have to believe that. Mm -hmm. And we have to have enough of us all believing that to work towards it. That mm -hmm. is where the change is going to happen, right? If mm -hmm. we sit here and we say, this is going to fall back off like everything else, right? We are, we're all focused on this right now and we're going to get through this pandemic and we're going to, our eyes are going to be on something else. Then we are going to do such a disservice to ourselves and the next generation after all of the work that has been put in before us mm -hmm. um, and the fights that have been had and the, and the barriers that have been broken. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have Kamala Harris, who is going to be the first female black Indian American, Asian American woman in mm -hmm. the highest position ever so far in our country. Mm -hmm. Okay, things are changing, right? We th those are the yeah. types of steps. Once we see those, then we are mm -hmm. then we build on them. Mm -hmm. So I do believe it. I absolutely get concerned when I see the the level of conversation around it dying down. But that does not mean that it is not our job to keep bringing it back up to the top, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait until we are in crisis mm -hmm. to make this a priority, mm -hmm. which is unfortunately what happens with a lot of important things and, and with a lot of companies is that it's the latest crisis of the day that is that gets the most attention, energy, and, mm -hmm. and um, investment. Mm -hmm. And so we have got to stop operating from a reactive place and instead set the course for what we hope to do in the next one, three, and five years and stay that course. So let me ask you, you know, this is obviously a business um, that you've started with two other women. Um, and so they're, you know, obviously very, very oriented towards women. And, um, and in terms of the um, mission of the company, very much oriented towards um, helping women and supporting women, I I wanted to ask you your thoughts on a statistic that we uncovered because we do a lot of research with our community, with our community members, and back in right before the 2016 election, we started noticing that there were some. Uh, we were getting data back from our community that women were telling us that they didn't necessarily think that a woman could be a, a president, could be a great president. Um, and so that was concerning. And then since then, we've done a lot more research about this. And one of the things that we continue to uncover is that women do not feel supported by other women. So over 60% of women tell us that they don't feel supported by other women. And the alarming thing about this too, is that the younger you are, the more likely you are to feel that women are not supportive of one another. So it's actually the older women who feel the most camaraderie with other women. And as you go down the years in terms of age, you it gets worse and worse. And so we're surprised by it because it's not a good, you know, it's not, a, it's not trending in the right direction, but I'm curious if you can comment on that, because what do you think, why do you think women feel that way? 
Oh, it breaks my heart, honestly. Um, and I think that, so whenever I hear a statistic like that, my first question in my head is why, right? Why do 60% of women not think that a woman, a woman could be president? Why do you know a significant number of women not feel supported? And what I what I tend to do, and I and I think honestly, this is sort of like why we created Have Her Back, is to say what are the historically excluding realities that could be contributing to this reaction, this feeling, this vision. So if we look at the fact that out of the last 45 presidents, there have never been any women. Are we really that surprised then that women don't think that a woman can be president, right? You can't be what you can't see. You also can't address or properly judge or assess what you can't see. Mm -hmm. And so the very few women that have made it into the, the most senior positions of companies, right? We know the statistic that there are more men named John than there are women in CEO positions in the Fortune 500. Mm -hmm. Then that means that those very few women have a laser focus on them and we are all watching them and we are judging every single move. We aren't looking at probably 350 of the guys because there are too many of them to pay attention to, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of them that aren't even under the microscope because they blend in. But mm -hmm. if you have five women, then yeah. we're going to be watching them like hawks. Mm -hmm. And so the pressure is greater. The expectation that they represent more than just themselves, that they represent an entire gender, an entire race, an entire mm -hmm. age group, an entire demographic right there that's an unfair thing that happens mm -hmm. and then also if you have grown up in an organization where it is mostly men at the top and there are very few women you do start to see them as competition because you think there is only one or two spots in that room mm -hmm. and so you know it's mm -hmm. it's again one of those things it's like you think about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her famous quote when there are nine mm -hmm. And, and the question that was asked was, when will there be enough women on the court? And there, some people's response is, that's insane for you to think you can have all women on the court. And it's like, is it? Because we've had all men forever. Mm -hmm. in so many in, on boards, in leadership mm -hmm. positions, in government, and like name the sector, and that's the case. Mm -hmm. But when we think about swinging that pendulum, it seems absurd. Well, we're going to have to swing that pendulum for a bit mm -hmm. to even remotely begin to land somewhere in the middle where equity is. And, and the other thing about the work that we're doing is we focus on equity, not equality, right? Mm -hmm. Because equality is I'm giving you both the same thing and therefore you're good. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't acknowledge is that what it took for one of those people to get to that spot, the mm -hmm. barriers that were in place that tried to knock them mm -hmm. off, right? The, mm -hmm. sy the systems that work against their success, the challenges they had to overcome for them to even get there. You, those are not equal at all, right? So equity is acknowledging the path that it took mm -hmm. and giving people the resources necessary to combat the systemic barriers that are in place. Are you finding resistance within when you start working with a company? Are you finding resistance um, amongst um, any particular gender? Is it like, you know, do you find that generally women are very supportive of it? Um, or do you find that men are more supportive? I'm curious if you're seeing any um, any any one gender being much more uh, supportive of your efforts. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a really good question and I think that it's it's too um nuanced I think to have a real gauge yet on if we're seeing mm -hmm. a difference in genders because mm -hmm. you have these genders that are at different levels of leadership, right? So they have different different um, spheres of influence within their own organization. They have different levels of power. And so I wouldn't compare the response or the acceptance of a white male CEO against a 
black female DNI leader, right? Mm-hmm. Because because those those challenges look so different. The mm-hmm. resources are different, the expectations, and also how they perform and where they misstep, the response to that looks very different as well. Yeah. So I, I think that until we really acknowledge the power of power, right? The the role it plays, the role of power and, and how that impacts um, the way that messages are received and the way that people are supported or challenged. Um, we, we aren't going to really truly understand sort of who, who wants this to happen, but, yeah. but the, the truth is, and the reality is that we need everyone to mm-hmm. be working towards this, right? Mm-hmm. We, our, our company is not just about doing this for women. Women are at the center of it for all mm-hmm. of the reasons that you mentioned at the beginning, Eliza. We're more than 51% of the population. We're 85% of consumer buying power. We drive culture, right? Mm-hmm. If you want things to happen, women, they get people together. They, mm-hmm. they motivate people. They run their households. So there is a difference. I mean, look at the leadership in, in different countries in response to COVID. Those that have done the best are led by women. Mm-hmm. They are leading with empathy. They are meeting people where they are, and then they are helping them to move forward. And so that is why we're focused there. But we need everyone, and we need men, and we have more men in positions of power than anywhere else. We need those men to feel the responsibility and their role in making this change as well. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, take a quick um, sort of so- step back for a second. You had this career in um, communications, um, spent most of your career right in communications before starting mm-hmm. your company. Did you know, did you always know you wanted to start your own thing um, in terms of being an entrepreneur and starting your own business? Or was this something that you had not really envisioned for yourself, but kind of came about? Yeah, I mean, I'm not one of those people that knew from the age of seven that I was going to be an entrepreneur. There are those mm-hmm. people, right, that, mm-hmm. that have that vision for themselves, and then they really go head head on into it. I didn't have that vision, um, but I, what I knew is that I wanted to do something that made a difference. Mm-hmm. Like I, I really also believe that I could, with the right people and support and efforts, make change. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that is that is a huge piece of this is like really being able to believe that there are a lot of people that when you get when you start talking that way, and you and you say that you can change the world, they roll their eyes a little bit. And they sort of like, you know, slide across the table a um, book on mania. (laughs) And you're like, No, I'm not being manic, right? Like, but you do have to really believe that you can do this because if you don't, then this is too hard. You can, don't go into this field. Do not mm-hmm. go into this career. Do not become an entrepreneur. Do not work on tackling equity in the mm-hmm. world's largest corporations. This is not for the faint of heart, right? Mm-hmm. Carolyn, Pamela, and I did not take this job to cruise into the next decade of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this is hard work. And we are doing it because we are obsessed with figuring this out. We are not okay with continuing on. We weren't con- okay with continuing on in the companies that we were in and having incremental, the ability to affect incremental change, right? Because again, mm-hmm. like you said, this was a passion project for us. Mm-hmm. And I think what ended up happening with, with all three of us um, was the fact that we were like, I'm sorry, did we just say out loud that a passion project is trying to make the, the workplace a better place for women and people of color. Mm-hmm. How is this, how is this a extracurricular, right? Mm-hmm. This should be mm-hmm. something that everyone is working towards. And, mm-hmm. and so that is why we decided that this was going to be full time. This was going to be what we were putting all of our energy into. And I love and truly believe that it is so important to, to think about the next generation and, and making a better world for them. But I also want it to be better for us right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Why do we have to sort of say, well, there went our chance. Mm-hmm. Um, we mm-hmm. let's this can happen at a quicker pace if more of us are committed to it. So that is what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the most senior, most invested people to 
to make this change and to start to, again, break down those systems and build them back up better so that we all can reap the benefits of it. What do you think your personal superpower is in terms of what you're bringing to the work you do, life in general? What what would you say that is? Oh, um, you know, I think that it is being able to connect with people and to really, I, I'm an empath through and through. It's an exhausting, it's an exhausting mm -hmm. life to be an empath, right? You feel a lot, you experience people's joys and their struggles. You know, I'm a, my mom was in the Coast Guard and she was a, she was in the Coast Guard for 25 years. So what, growing up, I moved every two to four years my entire mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. That meant that every two to four years I was walking in as the new kid. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, I had to figure out quickly how to connect with people, how to make friends, mm -hmm. how to establish myself and where I fit into the system that already existed. And a lot of these places mm -hmm. I was coming into a school where they had grown up since they were infants together, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do I then, how do I come into that world and not only find a way to be accepted, but also don't lose who I am? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't want to assimilate, you know? Yeah. And so I think that that has been a real skill I've had to develop over time yes. mm -hmm. was figuring that out. Mm -hmm. And what, how that applies to my life now is that I have absolutely no fear of walking into a room where I know no one. Mm -hmm. um, and right now it's usually virtual, right? We're not right. walking into many physical rooms anymore, <laughs> but, but, but this notion of like, taking on something that we haven't done before isn't proven, I have absolutely no qualms about it. Um, mm. And so I think that that, that like fearlessness a, a bit is probably yeah. a, has helped us. Yeah. And I, 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 have, I think that's an excellent point. I mean, the, your, your upbringing um, for sure sets you up for uh, as someone who can take, who would take this kind of risk, right? Cause yeah because leaving a corporate job to become an entrepreneur is a risk. And, yes. um, and it's now what, since you've told me that I can absolutely understand <laughs> how this is in your future, it sure, was sure. destined to happen for you. Um, what would be the best piece of advice you would give to somebody else who was considering another woman um, who was considering uh, taking that, leap and becoming and starting her own business or a side project that might be a passion project. What, what, what's your advice? So there is this quote that comes to my mind all the time and I am not going to remember who said it, um, but we will look it up later. Leap and the net will appear. Mm. Um, and so, you know, of course people need to trust their gut more than anything. Um, and so I don't want to sit here and say, leap in the net and it will appear, take every risk, right? Because I, I don't know what all of the, the challenges are going to be for anyone who's listening to this or what their situation is. But when you know that you are meant to do something, stay the course, right? Mm -hmm. There are going to be people that will try to talk you out of it. And, the, and usually the reason they're doing that um, is because they are afraid. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. it's something that they could never see themselves doing. They only are seeing the risk in it. Know that that is whoever you want to listen to is your choice, but mm -hmm. you don't have to take in any of it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I have learned. I think becoming a mother has made me much more like I'm more resolute in what I think. And I also am more trusting of myself than I've ever been in my entire life. There is mm -hmm. something that happens when you bring a human into this world and then you are responsible, as you know, Liza, of keeping them here, mm -hmm. that makes you realize how powerful your gut is mm -hmm. and your instincts. And mm -hmm. so if you are really feeling like there is something that you need to be taking a leap to do, a different direction you need to go in, don't mm -hmm. be afraid. Like that fear means you are going towards the right thing. And, and if you are feeling completely safe and comfortable, you probably have outgrown what you're doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that is such good advice. And, um, you know, a mixture of the hopefulness of kind of taking the leap, but also the grounding of, yeah. you know, trusting your gut and mm -hmm. really trusting yourself. I love that advice. Thank you yeah. for t spending time with us today. How can people be in touch with you if they want to be in touch? Yes. Um, so you can always send me an email, Erin, E-R-I-N, at haverback.com. And then follow Haverback on all of our social properties. We You can reach out to us there. Um, we are Have Her Back on all properties and haverback.com. And then my social handles are Erin Go Gallagher. And you can always reach me there. Awesome. Well, Erin, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you, Eliza. Enjoy the rest of that sunny day you've got going. 